Hey, what's going on, everybody? We are out here at Dr. Phillips Cemetery in Orlando, Florida. And we're here to visit the grave of what I consider a golfing legend. His life was cut too short. Uh, God only knows what he could have done if, you know, the tragedy hadn't have happened and all that stuff. He was my favorite golfer growing up. So it kind of sucked, you know, when everything happened. I lost my golfer. So it's really an honor for me to be able to come do this. And I'm glad I get to bring you guys along for this uh, kind of emotional in a weird way. So yeah, if this is your first time here, hey, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, you know, doing all those things. And if this isn't your first time here, hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I think I forgot, forgot his name, Payne Stewart. Like how could I, I don't know, I get so wrapped up in stuff sometimes that yeah. Um, we're gonna walk around the cemetery. I'm gonna talk about Mr. Stewart and his life. We'll celebrate his life. Then we'll go visit the grave, pay our respects and do all those things. So let me get this camera turned around. We'll walk around. It's a beautiful cemetery. So let's get started. Little side note, we've came down here to go to Disney. So I figured while we were down here, I could run over here. So you may see my kids and Miss Backroads and some of the video today. They're playing under the beautiful mossy tree. There's so many of these in Florida. I mean, you cannot beat. I mean, it is a peaceful, beautiful place here. Love it. All right, so let's talk about Mr. Stewart, shall we? Stewart was born and raised in Springfield, Missouri and attended school, a K through 12 school on the campus of Missouri State University. He played collegiate golf at Southern Methodist University in Dallas, where he was a member of Phi Gamma Delta and graduated in 1979. This moss, I just had to come over here and, you know, we don't really have this even in northern Alabama, it's kind of reserved for the southern part of the state. So it's really neat to see. It's kind of like a little novelty within itself when we come to Florida. Stewart failed to earn a PGA Tour card at qualifying school in his graduation year. So he played on the Asia golf circuit for a couple years. He won two tournaments in 81, including the Indonesian Open and a playoff over three holes. Later that year, he earned his PGA Tour card for the 82 season and won his first title on the tour that year at Quad Cities Open. Y'all having fun? Yeah? This win was especially memorable to him because it was the only time his father, Bill, got to see him win. Stewart's father had played in the 55 U.S. Open and had introduced him to the game. In April of 89, Stewart won the MCI Heritage Golf Classic by five strokes, with then tournament record score of a 268, which is 16 under par. Stewart was gaining a reputation for being one of the most consistent players on the PGA Tour. One of the best players in the world, not yet to have won a major championship at this point. And I say not yet because at Kemper Lakes Golf Club, Stewart won the PGA Championship in 1989, his first major title. Stewart's second major title came at the 1991 U.S. Open after an 18-hole Monday playoff with Scott Simpson on a wind-blown Hazeltine National Golf Club course in Minnesota. At the 99 U.S. Open at Pinehurst, Stewart won his last major title memorably holding a 15-foot par putt that defeated Phil Mickelson. He's been in the news a lot lately in the golfing community. He beat him by a stroke in the final round. And Tiger Woods and Vijay Singh were also in competition. Let's not forget them. They were always in the mix back then. Stewart credited his winning putt to being more at peace with himself after his strength and religious beliefs. At the time of his death, Death, Stewart was ranked third on all-time money list and in the top 10 of the official world golf rankings. He had been ranked in the top 10 for almost 250 weeks from 1986 to 1993 and again in 99. 
Let's look at this stone. What in the world? Let's check this out. So Philip Phillips. And it says founder of the community of Dr. Phillips. Under his hand, the wilderness bore fruit. He was born in Hot Springs. So that's his wife, Adela Wolf, a devoted mother, a faithful wife. Let's uh, walk over towards Mr. Stewart's grave. Find a grave has it like right over in there. Stewart represented the U.S. in five Ryder Cups. He also played for the U.S. on three World Cup teams. On October 25th, 1999, a month after the American team rallied to win the Ryder Cup and four months after his U.S. Open victory, Stewart was killed in a crash of a Learjet flying from his home here in Orlando to Texas for a year-ending tournament. The tour championship held at the Champions Golf Club in Houston is where he was headed to. The National Transportation Safety Board investigators concluded that the aircraft failed to pressurize and that all on board were incapacitated by hypoxia as the aircraft passed to the west of Gainesville. The aircraft continued flying on autopilot until it ran out of fuel and crashed in a field in South Dakota. He was just 42 years old. At that week's tournament, the Tour Championship, Stewart's good friend Stewart Appleby organized a tribute to his friend. With Stewart's wife's permission, he wore one of Payne's own signature outfits for the final round of the tournament on Sunday. And most of the rest of the golfers in the field wore short pants that day as well. So there we go. William Payne Stewart, the champion of our hearts. We will love you forever. And he has uh, it's a picture of how he looked. You see some golf balls too. He has Psalm 6 8 as his little epitaph. So, yeah, Payne Stewart. So, yeah, Payne Stewart. Like, he had, it's like he got cut short right in his prime, right? Like, in the late 80s, early 90s, like, he had a good run, but it seemed like the, in the, the latter 90s, he just really came on. <clears throat> and that's when, that's when I was really getting into golf. You know, there was the Tiger area. You know, like, Tiger was playing good. VJ Singh was playing good. Phil was killing it. And then you had Payne Stewart. And I like the way Payne dressed. He had that more natural old school like across the pond look right like the these other the other golfers i named were a more american style type of look but with those shorts and that hat man you you couldn't beat it like so i'm glad that you and i got to come here together for for me to meet the man that got me into golf like it means a lot and i'm glad you guys get to come along for that and thank you so much. And if you've made it this far, like, thank you. It really does mean everything in the world that you guys watch and share. And, and we have, uh, like, we have a uh, Backroads Golf channel. And that's the reason I play golf. Like, we don't get to play much, you know, life and kids. But because of this man, it's the reason I play golf. Like, it's, you know, he didn't know he had that influence. But it's really neat. So thanks for watching. You know, I hope that everybody's doing well out there. I know times are tight. Times are tough, man. And I just want you to know that, thank you. Like, if you don't feel appreciated, just know that you got one fan out there, right? Like, I, I got your back. Like, I can't meet you at a bar and get in a fight with anybody, but I want you to know that if you don't, if you ain't got nobody, you got me, right? So just take that, put it in the bank, and hold it. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful time. If not, everything passes, right? 
yeah so sorry sorry i get to rambling so yeah thanks for watching i'll see you guys on the next one and you never know what you're going to find on the back roads i'll see you guys next time